Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, this video we're going to make a snow particle system. Uh, I've already made a couple snowflakes here, so let me show you what they look like. The snowflakes we're going to use is I've made a snowflake here, and then I also have a um, alpha map for it, and then there's a second snowflake right here, and uh, there's the alpha map for that as well. So we're going to be using these two snowflakes and we're going to make a particle system out of it. Um, I like snow at night, so we're going to use a nighttime scene here just for, our, for uh, what we're doing. So let's go ahead and get started. And my name is Brad, and, and uh, I'll be showing you how to do this today. So, all right, so to start off, let's go into our content browser. And we'd like to get a new particle system here. And I'm going to use my, my package, BJS Test Particles, that I've used before. And I'll right-click in here and just say New Particle System. Let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. Right-click and New Particle System. All right, when the new particle system comes up, I can give it a name. Make sure that you put it in the package you would like it in. And we'll just call this um, Snow Particle. Or how about Snow Emitter? That's what we'll do, Snow Emitter. So that'll be the name of our Snow Particle System. All right, when that comes up, this is our particle system editor called Cascade. And before we get to using this, let's go ahead and bring those snowflakes into the content browser. So I'm going to minimize this. And I can actually bring the snowflakes in simply by dragging them in. So I'll start off by this uh, snowflake right here, and I'll drag that in. And then what it's asking me is, this is my diffuse map, what would I like to do with it? Well, first of all, I am going to have an opacity on it, so let's change this, the blend mode, to translucent. And also, let's just go ahead and connect already the RGB to the diffuse, and also let's uh, connect the RGB to the emissive channels. And then, also, I would like to create the material. It just saves me a step, so I don't have to do it. And that looks good, I'll say OK. There's my snowflake, here's my material. Let's also bring in the uh, mask for this. So I'll bring that up. Here's the, which one is this? There's the mask for it. I'm just going to drag that in here. And then it, uh, this I'm just going to use as normal. So I'll just say OK to that. Let's go ahead and put these together. So I'll double click my material. It brings up my material editor. Let me resize it so you can see it also. There it is. There's my material editor. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. And uh, right here is my diffusive diffuse texture. And let's get the let's get the mask in there. So I'm going to pull this over a little bit. Here's the here's my opacity map. And with that selected in here, I can hold T on the keyboard and click. And then it brings up a texture sample. And my texture sample because we said to make this uh, the blend mode translucent, it enables the opacity channel here. So I'll take my texture sample, the RGB, and just connect it to the opacity channel. And then notice now, anything that is black is blacked out. And uh, I, don't, I can't see it. So all the white stuff I get to see here. And I put a little texture. I just went into Photoshop, made this, and uh, added a little texture to it as well, just for the fun of it. And then when we're done, we'll save it. So I'll click on the green check mark. Let's also make a second snowflake while we're doing this. So I'll come over here, and here's my other snowflake, and I'll drag the diffuse in first, because this is the one I'm going to create the, the material with. So we'll say create material, change to, again, change the blend mode to translucent, and once again, RGB to diffuse, RGB to emissive, and then say OK. All right, that looks good. Let's also bring in the mask for it. So the mask for this one is over here, Snowflake. And I'll drag that into a blank spot. And then for this one, we'll just say OK. Let's also do the same thing for this material. Let's double click it. Click on it, holding Control to pull it out. Then in here, let's make sure that we have the, uh, the, the texture highlighted. Go back into here, into my material editor, holding my T down, clicking to create a texture sample, and then once again connecting the RGB output to the opacity channel. And there it is. You can see that it's blacked out. It looks good. Let's click on the green check mark to save it. 
and it applies the changes and we're good I can close this so alright so I've got two materials in here you can see here's one snowflake here's the other one um, and they both look really good um, done with those so uh, I'm gonna pull this aside or I can even just um, uh, minimize it and actually before I do that I'm, I'm going to choose this snowflake right here and with that selected I will minimize it let's go back into our particle system and see what uh, see what's in there. So here's my particle system. This is the BJS Snow Emitter, and let's go ahead and make some changes here. In the, let me pull this down a little bit. In the particle emitter, we can change the name here. So down here are the properties. So instead of the emitter name, I will call this Snow Emitter. So there's my Snow Emitter, and that's all I'm going to do there. Then in the required module is where we're going to put the material. You can see under the first rollout here where it says emitter, then there's material. And because I have because I have the material already selected here in the content browser, I can click on the green arrow and it will now take that material and throw it into my, uh, my particle emitter here. I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit. I can zoom in by right clicking and moving the mouse forward and then also by left clicking you, as you see I can uh, move it around I can orbit around in here left clicking and then if I'd like to bring it down a little bit I can middle mouse click and bring it down and then make a few more adjustments and I'll zoom out just a little bit here because I'd actually like to see how uh, how high it's gonna go up there so uh, left clicking right clicking and middle mouse clicking uh, enables you to uh, navigate around here in the preview window. Alright, so that's all I'm going to do here. Um, and we're going to make sure, now the images that I have, the snowflake images, they're actually square. They're 256 by 256. Um, so they are square. So we're just going to leave this square. Other options, uh, rectangle velocity and type specific. But since they're square, we're just going to use um, PSA square. The next thing we'll do is let's go down into the spawn module and let's choose how we're going to spawn these. Now the spawn rate, uh, how do I want these? What is the rate at what I want these spawned? Well, I'd like to have it um, be constant. Actually, let's change this. Instead of constant distribution, meaning how many per second? Well, this is constant at 20 uh, snowflakes per second. And uh, let's test this. So if I just put one in there, it restarts, and I should count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, and so on. So you know that this is per second count right there, simply by what we see in the viewport right there. Now instead of a constant though, what I would like is for there to be some variation, some range to it, so it looks like the snowflakes are falling kind of at a random variation. So we'll come over to the blue triangle here, which is create a new object click on it and then let's go to a, uh, a float uniform so we were doing constant now let's do uniform and that gives us a range so I have a min range and a max range well I first of all I'd like my minimum to be about 150 snowflakes minimum so I'll put minimum in there uh, clicking on the or typing on the down arrow key on my keyboard then I can uh, go back and forth up and down arrow keys cycles between those two for my max uh, let's put a much higher number like 500 and then press enter to commit the change so now I have between 150 and 500 particles spawning every second um, and uh, and that's pretty good I kinda like that so I'm going to leave that we're not gonna do any bursts in there and uh, I'm done with this the spawn module they're all kind of gathered together here. You can see they're all put together, and if I point it so we're looking right at it, kind of a neat effect, but not really what I'm looking for in this particular one. So let's keep making some changes. The lifetime. By default, these things live for basically a second, and then they disappear. Well, I can also have some randomness to how, they, how long they live. So let's choose um, maximum of 10 seconds. I don't want to get too many particles into my system, into my, uh, into my level, because what will happen is they'll continue to build at the rate of between 150 and 500 per second. And if I get too many particles in there, my level will slow down. So uh, we're only going to have them live for about 10 seconds. And let's make it random. They'll live somewhere between how about 6 and 10 seconds. So the particles will randomly live. Uh, the shortest ones will have a lifespan of six 
seconds and the oldest ones will have a lifespan of 10 seconds. Now you can see here, since it's not one second, it's 10 seconds now that you can see. I'm going to pull out a little bit and maybe pan down so you can see how far out they really go, the ones that are 10 seconds. So they now go pretty far out. Um, so I can put my, part my particle system pretty high overhead to start the snow. Alright, let's keep looking here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because now what's going on is my particle system actually is all starting from a point. And, uh, and we'd like to change that. Um, but let's keep going down the line here. Uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. So we're done with lifetime, the initial size. Now all of these particles you can see are all the same size right here. Again, let's add some variation to it. So we'll, we'll change the, um, the size of them. We, we, again, we have a min and a max. And we have x, y, and z coordinates here. Well, uh, I'm the, because it's a square, um, it only affects if we change the x. So I'm going to have the maximum of 15. Snowflakes aren't real large, but in my level, just so you can see them, we're going to make them 15 units. And then the minimum on the x will make it 5. So now you can see that there is a random distribution. Some are smaller, all the way down to 5 units, and some are larger, all the way up to 15 units. And then the y, it just uh, it kind of ignores the y since they're square. Um, if it was rectangular, then it would also um, choose the y there as well. That's all I wanted to do here. So a min of 5, max of um, 15, both on the x-axis. We're done here. Let's go into initial velocity. Initial velocity, um, I kind of like the speed that, the, that these are coming down. You can make it faster, you can make it slower. Um, I kind of like what's going on here, so I'm actually just going to leave the initial velocity. And the color over life, I'm not going to mess with that either. Let's change the spread of these particles, because I don't want snow coming from just a point in space. I'd actually like it to be distributed over a wide area here. So we don't have that module here right now, so we'll have to right click down here in the blank space. And then I can choose if it's a location, and let's choose initial location. And that will give us the opportunity, it'll give us the parameters to be able to spread that out. So initial location, and then I have to select initial location. And here's our distribution, which is kind of the spread of how we're going to spread this out. Now keep in mind that um, zero is basically the, the starting point right here. Let me see if I can point this like this in the preview so you'll get to see how it actually spreads. So let's start with my max. I'm going to give my max a positive number. And in my scene, if I want to determine how far I want the snow uh, particle system to be spread out over, I better know what distance it is. So let's minimize this for just a moment. If I go into my top viewport here, um, I need to measure what the size of the entire level is. Well, I'm just using a default level here, but let's measure. If we middle mouse click and drag, that gives us a pretty good. So it's basically 40 uh, 96. It's, a, it's square. Um, so it's going to be 4096 by 4096. So that's what I want. Half of that is going to be 2048. So if I just go from here to the center, half of that's going to be 2048. So somewhere around there. 20, pretty close. 2048. So that's what our dimension is going to be that we're going to use. So I'll go back into my into Cascade, my particle editor. Initial location, let's start the x spread at uh, 2048 on the x-axis. Um, now let's do it, uh, you can see that, but let's do it on the y-axis um, first. How about that so you can see it? So we'll do 2048. That will enable you to see how it's spread out there. I'm going to put this back to zero just so you can see how the spread works. Here it is, it's spread from the center to 2048 off to the right-hand side there. Let's also choose, I'd also like it to get here on the left, so we need to make the y negative 2048. And now you can see it spreads out on the y-axis. Here's the, this tells us what direction we are right here. And then it spreads out over the entire y-axis. I'd like it to also spread out from back there to forward here. That's the x-axis. So let's make this 2048. Let's go to the min x and also make that 2048. And we're good. I'm not going to adjust the, um, the z. Uh, I would like it all to start from the same point. I could actually have a distribution um, 
their variation of the height from which I wanted the snow to start but in my level I just want it all to start from pretty much from the same direction so that looks really good let's refresh it restart it in the sim um, restart it in the level um, not sure why it's not showing up here but let's uh, we're gonna play it anyway so everything looks good here I'm going to close it and in my content browser I'll look for my particle system which is right here we call it snow emitter now also I have no picture here we're gonna put a picture in there in just a moment let me drag this over here so you can still see it and let's drag the uh, BJS snow emitter into my level and uh, there it is let's minimize this and let's rotate it around because right now the particles are going up right now I don't see any particles at all let's see what's going on here so I'm going to double click my particle system and it looks like oh I can see something going on there what's going on are they it looks like they're way far away something's going on here with my initial location let's see oh here's the reason right here my X is 2048 uh, for some reason I didn't hit negative 2048 right there so my particles you can you may not even be able to see them on the video I can see little particles off in the distance there um, so this should have been negative 2048 I set it but for some reason I didn't hit it so negative 2048 press enter now it covers the entire area um, of the square here let's see if we can get it down a little bit so you can see it there all right, so that looks good. Now, I had talked about getting that picture in there. Um, I don't have a lot of snowflakes in here right now. I can increase the um, the spawn rate if I wanted to. Um, let's do that. So let's go into spawn. Let's just increase the spawn rate to like a thousand. We'll double it. And that gives me a whole lot more snowflakes. And even if I increase this to maybe 800, gives me a lot of snowflakes in there. So, and let me restart it in the sim. All right, so it gives me a lot of snowflakes now, and uh, once the snowflakes are in there, I can go ahead and take a picture of them. So I kind of like, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here, and we'll take a picture. All right, so this is good. Let's say, oh, and let's go back, because we don't want that many snowflakes. My min is going to be 150, and my max will be 500. All right, that looks good. So I'll close my snow emitter you can minimize this and now you can see the snow particles are in there however they're going up so let's first of all let's uh, reset this in my top viewport let's set it so that it's right in the center of my scene that looks really good and it should be covering from corner to corner all aspects of it if I have my real time on then you'll be able to see the particles there being created and also in my front viewport let's take a look at that and uh, oh we have to rotate it so pressing the spacebar get to rotation I will click and drag and I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees there it is so now the particles will start going downward once they're going down I'm going to have to see how far down they go so because remember we set it from between six and ten seconds that actually looks like a pretty good height right there because some snowflakes are going just a little bit below the level and many of them are are uh, going just down to the line and a few of them will be disappearing at six seconds which is above ground a little bit so I could put it down just a little bit more if I wanted to that looks really good and it's going to each of the edges there let's go back into our perspective view and let's play in here let's right click and play let's see if I can get it to where you can see it that's eh, not gonna happen so we'll just click our button here alright so let's take a look and I see the snowflakes coming down that looks really good so we have snowflakes some of them I actually see disappearing before they hit the ground so maybe it's not such a great idea to have a um, have some of them disappear at six seconds uh, but I did want to show you how the lifetime um, distribution works for min and max there now these uh, snowflakes all look exactly the same let's uh, let's add a little variation to it pressing escape to get out of um, the in-game mode there let's also open up our uh, particle system back up so I'm going to double click it <clears throat> 
And since I've already set up all of these parameters for the snow emitter, let's just duplicate this. I'm going to right click, emitter, and then let's duplicate emitter. So I'll do that. We'll call this snow emitter 2. That looks good. And the required module, this is where I can change the snowflake. Now you know that we have two snowflakes. Here's the second one. Let's go look for, there's the material for the second snowflake. I'll select that. Back into Cascade. And in the required module, I'll select that one. I'm going to leave all the parameters the same. And we've already set it up. And uh, so now we ought to have twice as many snowflakes um, in there. And now we've got two different types of snowflake. Let's take a look at them. So I don't even have to save this. It's done. I would like to save my package though, so right click save. And uh, let's get rid of the content browser. I can see already the two different types of snowflakes coming down. Let's see if we can um, play in the editor here and see if we get two different types of snowflakes. Oh yeah, you can definitely see there's two different types of snowflakes there. So anyway, so that's how to do a snowflake particle system using Cascade uh, and using a couple different particle systems and using different types of snowflake images and their masks. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Give me some feedback um, if there's something else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.